thank you most sincerely for finding time to join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Olumuiwa Matuluku. How's your we been? And how's business going? And we do think that it is still in order to wish our Muslim compatriots Ramadan Karim. We're in the month of June, and that means that the federal government tax amnesty program is about to come to an end. Yes, the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, VAIDS, flagged off on July 1st, 2017, will come to a close on June 30, 2018. So, if you want to take advantage of the waiver of interest and penalty, freedom from tax audit, tax investigation, and from prosecution, you had better go and file now. Tick tack, tick tack. The clock is ticking. Of course, also, beginning from Monday, the 4th of June, the new excise duties on tobacco and alcoholic beverages approved by President Muhammad Buhari way back in March 2018 came into effect. They call them sane taxes, meant to protect those who enjoy smoking and drinking from the health hazards that they bring along. But there's a call. According to the Federal Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, the excess duties, the increases, are spread over a three-year period from 2018 to 2020 in a bid to moderate the impact of these excise duties on the prices of those products. Welcome once again. The program is Tax Matters. On the last two episodes of Tax Matters, we shared with you the views, the knowledge, the perspectives of our young ones on taxes and taxation. Today, we want to talk to the older ones. We want to talk to the adults. On the 25th of May, 2018, one of the foremost tax practitioners in Nigeria, Mrs. Morenike Babintin Ashai, turned 70. Apart from being a very, very good chartered accountant, Mrs. Babintin Ashai is one of the leading lights in the taxation profession in Nigeria. In fact, she was one of the founders of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. She is, in fact, number three on the member's role. To mark Mrs. Babintin Ashai's birthday, a cocktail of intellectual activities were put together, made up of public lectures, public debates, and a book launch. We want to share with you the proceedings of the public debate on this episode. Do Nigerians get value for the taxes that they pay? Do Nigerians receive value for taxes paid? Mr. Yemi Babintin Ashai moderated the public debate, beginning by asking the attendees from the floor for their views on the topic. Taxation is really about bringing power to people. I agree that Nigerians do not get value for their money, but I want to ask the question that those who are supposed to lead us by example, do they actually pay the tax? Well, I agree that we don't have value for the taxes that we pay. But do we pay adequately what we are supposed to pay as and when due? And I will always refer to the Agbekoda riot, the Abba riot, the Rasamkuti riot. They fought. They fought because they were paying adequately as and when due. So they had all the rights to fight. Yes, we may not yet get enough value for our tax, but we, may con we must continue to push until we get it right, like everything else in life. The panelists thereafter had the floor. Do Nigerians get value for taxes paid? My answer is no, but Nigerians themselves are guilty. And why is that? We are caught in a vicious cycle. We blame the leadership for not doing the right things, but then the followership too is just as bad. I don't know whether any of us here has read the book, Why Nations Fail, and you hear the story of a town called Nogales, same people, same language, same ancestry, same heritage. One is in Arizona, in the U.S., 
the other is in Mexico. Then the two towns or the, 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 the two halves of the same town have different lifestyles. Things work in the north, things don't work in the south. They pay taxes in the north because the structure is there, the industry is good, but in the south, in Mexico, they don't pay taxes and all things are dilapidated. Now, who do you blame for that? What is the leadership recruitment process in Nigeria? Before we even worry about tax, we should worry about those who will manage the monies we collect. So, when you want to elect your local government chairman, your councillor, what you have is that a class perpetuates itself. They will keep on recycling themselves, and then they are the ones who are managing the, the treasuries at the local level, at the state level, at the federal level. So, we won't get value for our revenue until we change our leadership recruitment process and our participation begins with our thumb. Now, on money is collected, on revenues collected, we should ask questions. But once again, we must first worry about those who are going to manage those resources for us, whether we pull them from the ground or whether we bring them from our pocket. Participation, the real first sacrifice we should make is to get involved. We may not all be in office. We may not all be governors. We are, we are all citizens, and that's the highest office in the land. Um, sometimes you want to ask yourself, which one came first? Was it the hen or the chicken? For instance, the numbers are very, very dismal for Nigeria. We have one of the lowest tax GDP ratio on the continent at 6% as of last year. For South Africa, it's 27%. Ghana is about 16%. Nigeria is 6% people. tax GDP. And according to FIRS, in October of 2017, less than 15 million Nigerians um, pay tax. Okay. So I feel like before we ask, before we ask that question of whether we get value for the tax we pay, I think in the natural order of questioning, the question is, do we pay tax? Fantastic. And I think those numbers are a good indication of whether we pay tax or not. Then now, do we get value for the tax we pay? Obviously, no. How do I know that? We don't get value for our primary source of income, first of all, which is oil and all the other forms of income. The tax, the tax revenue is, is a minute part. Of that. The question says, do, we, do Nigerians get value for, the, for their taxes? Now, the scenario that I want to paint is that I had a first-hand experience in um, taxation, you know, taxing the people or getting the awareness. I remember when we went into, um, you know, at supervisory councils where we were the executive council. And um, I remember the governor said, you know, he wanted technocrats to go to the local government to revamp um, the system. And part of the revamp was looking at our IGR. And when we got there, we realized that there was no um, information as to how they can generate the, the, the revenue and taxes. There were a lot of um, you know, opportunities. For instance, the telcos were having a field day in my local government because of the masks. They didn't pay any revenue, they didn't pay any tax. Wow. for over four years. Wow. So there was a committee that was set up, and I headed that committee. And when we came to Lagos, they thought it was the usual. Um, first of all, MTN was like, huh? which local government is coming to Lagos to ask for you know, monies that have not been paid for years? So we, we really had to slog it out with them. Now, one thing that I want to say is that voting the right people into government would you know, make what, of, what we are talking about, you know, getting value for people, voting the right people. Not only that, um, enlightenment and awareness. Um, I remember also that a lot of, um, you know, hotels, uh, a lot of restaurants, were not, they didn't understand why they needed to pay tax. Now, when we got the IGR from the abysmal low figure that we had in that year, but that was 2008, and we, you know, we continued over a period of three years, um, I was part of the committee, um, of course I was a lone ranger because of the development projects that I insisted that we must, you know, embark on in the local government, you know, um, hospitals, schools, and all of that. Why did I leave? I'm coming back to, you know, the system wanted to shape me into what I didn't want to be. And I told myself that it is either I join them or... I leave. Yeah. And I had to take a leave because I didn't, that was not my intention of going into politics. So we all have a part to play as yeah. citizens, Fantastic. as um, individuals, as people who want to run for government. 
you will meet those stumbling blocks, but the, the, the question is, how do we move from this point? Mr. Sam Amadi dug deeper, exploring the nexus between payment of taxes and service delivery. First question would be, what really is value? Do people, how do people measure the value they ought to get? Yeah. In Nigeria, there's a low expectation. And that's why you see governors flag roads and uh, bridges and some even give uh, empowerment of, uh, of uh, showing machines and is celebrated <laughs> because of low expectation. So I think the first problem is for us to unlock our mind, understand that this is the what expected value of governance, including civility, service orientation, quality service, respect for citizens. Those are yeah. part of the aspect of value that tax money should be on. Then the other point that like, came, came out of what you said, that oftentimes, if you look at the example you gave of Mexico and the uh, US, the same kind of the same people, but the institutions of their governance changed the outcome. Yeah. And that's where Lagos is a little bit different. Now, if you look at tax, the, the recent rent increase of um, large charge, and the way yeah. the people reacted, and the way government showed some degree of sensitivity, yeah. it is because there are now a reset of social expectation in Lagos State. And because people are paying more tax. So yeah. once you have that tax uh, bracket, especially middle class people are paying tax, now wire in themselves an expectation of uh, service delivery that's coupled to that tax paying. Exactly. And it creates a new culture of expectation and demand for quality of service. Wow. So as we improve our broadening the tax base, not just civil servants who are captives of tax, uh, tax pay because they take them from there. If you broaden it and get back to middle class, corporate tax improves, people begin to have more incentive to ask questions. So I think the critical question for us is two, two, two points. One is effectiveness in tax system, collection, rate, and other. But also the socioeconomic aspect of this. How much as citizens seeing tax as a lever to control government. That's and that's where tax is very important. And the argument is that if, people pay, if a society has more people paying tax, the chances of greater accountability will be in that system. But if it's a windfall like oil, the chances of greater accountability will be less where people don't pay tax. All things being equal. Profound. Very profound. Dr. Amadi, that's a very good one about our low expectations. I totally agree with you. We need to really rewire our people's minds so that their expectations can be higher than it is. So they will also be compelled to pay more and then demand more from those who are supposed to lead them. Frankly speaking, it's going to be extremely difficult for us in Nigeria to make progress without that, that reorientation of our people. Even those who ought to know, it's the same thing. The greatest tax evaders are even those who have, in some cases, According to a bit of the research I did, about 65% of the Nigerian economy, 65% uh, of it is informal, and many, much of our people are not captured in the tax bracket. And because of that, they are either not willing to pay, not able to pay, or not even ready to pay. So we need to find a way of capturing almost everybody. And that is good for governance. As he said, if 65% of the economy is, is informal. You're talking about God knows how many hundreds of millions. And then you are able to capture them one way or the other, and you're able to extract some money out of their pocket. If it comes from their pocket, it becomes a common world, out of which they want to see what you do with it. That will also raise their expectation. That will raise their level of sophistication, and then the level of questioning. And this clincher? When this country begins to see tax as your own subscription, to the future of your country, then we are going to have a democracy. Every day, my people, they for work. Some they do office work. Some get to them own business. So all of them, them want good road. Constant power for better life. Oh, whether now office work. Oh, oh yeah. Pay your tax. Whether now your own business. Oh, pay your tax. If you want a better life. Oh, Pay your tax. Now your civic responsibility. Pay your ha! tax. Better soup. Now money cook and more. Oh yes. Nothing goes for nothing, my brother. If you want portable water, security and hospital for make life jolly.
That's right. Good roads, good hospitals, portable water, adequate security, all come from taxpayers' money. Play your part in making Nigeria great. Everybody, small scale, big companies, entrepreneurs, do the right thing. Pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. Welcome once again. The 20th annual task conference has come and gone, but the impact generated by the conference continues to reverberate across the land. Of course, you do remember that the theme of that conference was institutionalizing taxpaying culture in a developing economy. On the sidelines of the conference, Tax Matters sat down with leading lights in the taxation profession in Nigeria with a view to getting them to x-ray that theme. We begin today with the interview with Dr. Mark Abani. Dr. Mark Abani was at one time a member of the board of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Dr. Mark Abani worked at Our Majesty's Revenue and Customs in the UK. His experiences span across both Nigerian and international arena. The theme of this 20th Annual Task Conference is institutionalizing taxpaying culture in the citizenry. Actually, they say in the developing economy, but let's bring it nearer home. What are the critical factors, in your opinion, in institutionalizing taxpaying culture in the citizenry? Um, making tax work, getting people to buy in, to giving up their hard-earned money uh, to the state um, is several folds. First of all, uh, taxpayers have got to have a feeling that they're getting something for their money. Uh, at the moment, there is a disconnect between tax that is paid and services that citizens have to use and sometimes have to provide for themselves. The second part of it is transparency. I have a favorite saying I always say, they know they chop village money. When citizens start to pay tax, they will start to look at what government is doing and that needs to start with accountability and transparency. And that's the expenditure side. Now, that is not really the taxation side, but it's the critical part. You know, two hands have to clap in order for you to have a sound. People need to know that the money that they're paying and that the money that the government is collecting, both tax and non-tax, is being used wisely, judiciously, and impactfully on society. So when people start to feel that they can see that the government got X million or billion naira from this source or that source and have actually used that money for one or two projects, something that they can see in their lives, then they will start to believe in that process. If we come back to my saying, the reason why nobody chops village money is because everybody contributes some money, everybody wants to know what is done and everybody knows what the outcome is going to be. That is the transparency and that is the accountability. Now the third thing that we need to do is we need to educate taxpayers, even tax authorities, or may I say even more especially tax authorities, because there's a lack of capacity. So people don't always understand the rules, don't understand the law on both sides of the fence. This leads to disputes, it leads to wrong uh, taxation bills, which means that people again start to lose confidence in why they should pay their tax. So a combination of a social contract, some indication that my money is being used for me and my brother, not necessarily for me, some education so that I know whether you're justified in asking me what you're asking me for, some rationalization in those uh, uh, bills that are coming through, and definitely improve capacity within the tax authorities to even understand what they have. In your interaction with the tax authorities, you are involved with the Governor's Forum and all that. Do you see any efforts being made in those regards? I mean, accountability, transparency, uh, giving value for money. Are we doing anything that suggests that that day is close by? Um, I'm not so sure about how close it is, but certainly in some states in the Federation, that day is just around the corner. I mean, the most notable one is Lagos, where people can see their tax money at work. But apart from Lagos, there are some up-and-coming stars. States like Quara State um, have hypothecated a part of the PAYE revenue they receive to an infrastructure fund, which means that people can see that this infrastructure is coming from their tax, and they're beginning to go to places that have never had any 
government input. So they have started to see that uh, happening. The various other states are moving up the ladder in terms of the transparency and accountability. So if you go to places like Kano, Kaduna, uh, uh, Abia State, these are all states where they have an open single bank account. So you can do your payments online, you can get your work done online. So already you are now sure that when I pay the man who purports to be the tax man, it's not going into his pocket. It's actually being used, going into the government pockets, which comes back to the second part, how it's spent. But so there is some movement in some states to do this, but there's not enough movement across all of the states. And part of the problem is that while there is lip service, there is not real political will to make sure that some of these things happen. There are a few incentives being thrown around now. You know, I think people have tried to stick and it's not quite worked, so they're now trying the carrot. So there's a program, for instance, that the World Bank is trying to work out with a number of, I think, most of the states of the Federation, which includes giving a, a reward, a financial reward, if they publish their statistics online, if they publish their budget online on time if they publish how the expenditure is being made on a quarterly basis on time, if they publish a harmonized view of all the laws so that an ordinary citizen can know what is going to be charged for or not charged for. If those are met, then the states get a financial reward in terms of significant sums of money they can use for further development. So that's a stick approach that's happening. Uh, unfortunately, not every state is fully geared into this. I, I was discussing with somebody recently and the reaction of uh, some of the state officials was publish what we collect online, then the citizens are going to ask us what are we doing with the money? And I said, bum, that's exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> that's the goal. So the day will be here faster for some places than others in Nigeria. Um, but uh, it's still some distance away and it is going to require sustained pressure through all of the various governments and various iterations. In some ways, I am praying that the Iranian deal is signed so that oil doesn't go up, so that we're forced to continue to look inwards. You spoke about uh, the example of Kwara State of Nigeria, yes. where some part of the PAYE collection is dedicated to infrastructure development. Would you subscribe to the view uh, that, that says that when you, for example, tenement rates, or whatever local government charges you levy, yes. that some part of that money should be returned to that community? If this has been tried. Um, a DFID ran a GEMS program. Uh, and the GEMS program tried a tax for service approach which was especially with local governments. And in local markets, they actually found that by, one, making sure that everybody in the market knew the price that they were supposed to pay, so not everybody could suddenly turn up and decide it's 17 naira per day or 16 naira or 15 naira. They all had one single price. But they also came into MOUs with the local government chairman that a percentage of the money collected from a market would be spent back in the market. And the results were outstanding really, really outstanding. And more and more, we need to start working with market associations, trade associations, at much the same way as we work with employers to make them agents of PAYE collection. Um, most people, even tax officials, would not pay their tax if they were not under PAYE. So working with uh, some of these market organizations and so on, in order to make them the agents for collection in the um, informal sector would be a critical step forward. It's non-statutory, so it would be good if it's backed up by some statute that says that this can be done legally, the same way as PAYE can be done legally, and this would help to engender that confidence, engender that approach, and reach all the grassroots. Interesting, very interesting. We will bring you the concluding part of the interview with Dr. Mark Abani next episode. And of course, we will begin the interview with one of the other leading lights. We thank you most sincerely for watching, and we join all Nigerians in paying glowing tributes to the soul of Mrs. Oluato Yolakuni, the first female accountant in Nigeria who passed on a few days ago. Mrs. Oluato Yolakuni was the first female accountant in Nigeria and was at one time president of ICANN, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. 
She was also the chairman of the board of the Education Tax Fund, ETF, now known as Ted Fund. May I gently so rest in peace. We thank you most sincerely for watching. Have a blessed week ahead.